ഹലമീൻ <laughs> Welcome to our program Hajj the journey of a lifetime. Alhamdulillah azza wa jalla no doubt Hajj is the journey of a lifetime. And today inshallah azza wa jalla we're going to be uh, talking about the sacredness of Makkah. Mashallah azza wa jalla this blessed city that uh, alhamdulillah azza wa jalla is boasting the place of birth of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and also the place where the beautiful kaabatullah is being situated inshallah so in today's program we're going to be going through some of the verses of the quran in which allah azza wa jal has mentioned the sacredness and the blessed of this uh, beautiful city you know when you talk about city people talk about vibrant and cities that never sleep i guarantee you you will never ever find any city in the world that is so vibrant that is so beautiful and a city that we can really say doesn't sleep this city of makkah 24 hours whenever you go to makkah you will see people alhamdulillah azza wa jal worshiping allah azza wa jal there might be other cities that you've heard of in the world that they never sleep because they always commit sins during the night they're always indulging sins they are doing the the work of the shaitan but this city of makkah is the city that never sleeps because this is the city of rahman the creator of the whole universe inshallah azza wa jal i want to Uh, start off with the verse of the glorious Quran Allah azza wa jal has mentioned about the blessing of this beautiful city la uqsimu bihadha albalad i swear by this city of makka subhanallah azza wa jal this city of makka so beautiful so vibrant and so charming that Allah taala in the third verse of surah at-tin he says wa hadha albalad al-amin and by this city of security so makkah is a city of security you must have heard about um, some prophets of allah when their people were punished by allah azza wa jalla the punishment came down in the form of heavy rain in the form of winds and one person he came to makkah and he stayed in makkah until he stayed in the blessed city of makkah the punishment of allah azza wa jalla did not come as soon as he stepped foot outside the beautiful haram he was killed as well alhamdulillah azza wa jalla there is security every person every animal every tree and every plant in makkah al mukarramah has been given the security by allah azza wa jalla and this is also the city in which our beloved prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was born in yes allah ta'ala chose the city of makkah for his last messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and allah azza wa jalla chose makkah as the city where islam will be dominant all over the world and alhamdulillah azza wa jalla more than 1.8 billion muslims living around the world and this is the birthplace of islam the birthplace of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam the birthplace of the great companions of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sayyiduna abu bakr siddiq sayyiduna umar farooq sayyiduna usman ghani sayyiduna ali karam allah ta'ala wajhul kareem and many other sahaba ikram they were all born in the beautiful city of makkah al mukarramah and this city also boasts what the beautiful building the most beautiful and beautiful building in the whole world and that is the beautiful baitullah the house of allah azza wa jal allah taala mentions inside the glorious quran inna awwala baitin wudi'a lin nasi lalladhi bi bakkata mubarakan wa hudan lil alamin 
Translation from Kanzul Iman. Verily, the first house of worship appointed for mankind was that at Makkah, full of blessings and a guidance for all creation. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. Makkah is the place where Allah Azza wa Jal appointed this place where he wanted the Kaaba to be built. And as we know in the previous uh, episode where we were learning about the sacredness of the Kaaba itself, we learned that the Kaaba was built by Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salatu was salam. And then Azad Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam and Sayyiduna Ismail alayhi salatu was salam built the Kaaba. And then it was built by the hands of the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So you can say that this building that is in Makkah is so sacred and so blessed that no other place in the world has ever been having this so much sacredness that three, four prophets of Allah were the ones who built this Kaaba. Subhanallah azza wa jal. It is also known as Ummul Qura, the mother of all the towns. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions inside the Holy Quran, Surah Shura, verse number 7. وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ قُرْعَانًا عَرَبِيًّا لِتُنْذِرَ أُمَّ الْقُرَى وَمَنْ حَوْلَهَا Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, And thus we have inspired unto O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a Quran in Arabic that you may warn the mother of the towns, yani Makkah, and all those around it. So subhanallah, my dear Islam brothers, Makkah was the place where Allah Azza wa Jal also took the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and gave him one of the greatest miracles of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and one of the greatest historical events that ever happened in the world. And that was the Mi'raj of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran, para number 15, Surah Bani Israel, verse number 1. Subhan al-ladhi asra bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa al-ladhi barakna hawlahu linuriyahu min ayatina innahu huwa al-sami'u al-basir. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says that pure is he who took his bondsman from the blessed Masjid al-haram to Masjid al-Aqsa. And where is Masjid al-Haram? Masjid al-Haram is situated in this blessed city of Makkah al-Mukarrama. And also, we're going to talk about the other blessed landmarks in the blessed city of Makkah. I want to mention one of the hadiths of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, in which Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that, he quotes a verse of the Holy Quran, that, and when Ibrahim alayhi salam said, my Lord, make this a secure city and provide its people with fruits. Whoever of them believes in Allah on the last day, Allah said, and whoever disbelieves, I will grant him enjoyment for a little. Then I will force him to the punishment of the fire and the wretched is the destination. So Azad Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam made dua for Makkah that Ya Allah Azza wa Jal bless the people of Makkah and Ya Allah Azza wa Jal bless the city of Makkah with every fruit. Those who have been to Makkah al Mukarramah, you must have seen that whenever you go, any season you go, you will find the fruit of that season. And even when the season is not there, you might not find it outside Makkah, but you will definitely find every type of fruit in Makkah al Mukarramah. And subhanallah, whenever you wake up and whenever you want to have something to eat, every majority of the shops are always open in Makkah al Mukarramah for the hujjaj e kiram for the Mu'tamireen, those who go for Umrah. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. Another hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Hazrat Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Adi, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I saw the messenger of Allah on his camel saying, By Allah, you are the best lands of Allah and the dearest land to Allah. And if I had not been expelled from you, I would not have departed. That is the love our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had for this beautiful city. Remember that time when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Muslims were forced to migrate to Madinatul Munawwara. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the people they write, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as he was leaving Makkah, he would look behind and he would cry tears and he would say that, Oh Makkah, I love you. Oh Makkah, I love you. But the people of you do not want me to stay here. But my dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madani channel, then the whole world was a witness when 10,000 Sahaba Ikram 
with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam marched peacefully in Makkah with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says that his head was lowered in gratitude and in thankness to Allah Azza wa Jal. When he entered Makkatul Mukarramah, he was thanking Allah Azza wa Jal for this very important blessing and victory that the Muslims had received. Another hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Bukhari Sharif, Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports, there will be no town which the Antichrist will not enter except Makkah and al Madina, And there will be no entrance of both Makkah and Madina, but the angels will be standing in rows, guarding it against him. And then al Madina will shake with its inhabitants three times and Allah will expel all the disbelievers and the hypocrites from it subhanallah so my dear Islam brothers these cities the Antichrist will conquer the world but he will not be able to enter these blessed cities why because Allah Azza wa Jal will be guarding this city from the treacherous the Antichrist the Dajjal in another place Allah Azza wa Jal he mentions inside the Holy Quran say you O Muhammad I have only been commanded to worship the Lord of this city who made it sacred and to whom all things belong. And I am commanded to be one of the Muslims, those who submit to Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah. So Allah Azza wa Jal chose Makkatul Mukarramah as the city where this beautiful religion of Islam will start from. And my dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madani channel, Makkatul Mukarramah is that city that it says that sinning is in, in Makkatul Mukarramah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whoever commits one sin in Makkah because of the sacredness of, of Makkah, because of the, the honor that the city of Makkah has, that person will get 100,000 bad deeds. Yani 100,000 bad deeds will be written in his account. And then anyone who does one good deed in the beautiful city of Makkah in the Haram, Allah Azza wa Jal will reward him with the thawab of 100,000 good deeds. Subhanallah. You know, it says that Hazrat Sayyiduna Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and whenever it was time for hajj, people used to come from all over the world. Hazrat Sayyiduna Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala and he would go after the hajj, he would go to the people and say, Oh people, now leave and go back to your cities. The Sahaba Ikram, they said that, Ya Amirul Mu'mineen, why are you sending people back to their places? Why can they not stay for longer? And Hazrat Sayyiduna Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that I fear that people will not be able to withhold the sacredness of this city. Therefore, once they have done the Hajj, they should go back. My dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madani channel, just ask yourself as well. We've been to Makkah. If you have been for Umrah, if you have been for Hajj, then we stayed in Makkah as well. Did we commit any sins in Makkatul Mukarramah? It is very, very important that when we are in this blessed city of Makkah, we take care of ourselves. As they say, that make sure that you do not commit any sins, even by hitting someone, even by tripping someone over, even by swearing at someone or anything that is unlawful that will make you commit sins. Don't even act upon that. Inshallah Azza wa Let's further on um, read about this beautiful city. Allah Azza wa He says inside the Holy Quran, وَمَنْ يُرِدْ فِيهِ بِإِلْحَادٍ بِظُلْمٍ نُزِقْهُ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ And whoever inclines to evil actions therein, yani in haram, or to do wrong, him we shall cause to taste a painful punishment. Yani those people who cause pain to anyone, those people who commit sins in Makkatul Mukarramah, Allah Azza wa Jal will punish them in a two, so to an extent that even no one is allowed to even kill any animals in Makkatul Mukarramah. You cannot hunt in the boundary, in the vicinity of the Haram as well. And then just imagine so many people today when they go for Hajj, Ma'azallah, they'll be backbiting, they'll be swearing, they'll be, you know, they'll be cursing other people. And Astaghfirullah, even people get to fights, can't get to the masjid. The masjid is closed and they start swearing at the police officers. You know, someone's uh, taken their shoes or they, should, they, they left their shoe in a place, they can't find it. People start to curse people. These things are all forbidden, especially in the sanctuary of Makkatul Mukarramah. We need to understand this is not just a normal city. This is the city in which 
the ulama ikram they say that you must make sure that you do not cause harm any sort of harm or any sort of pain to anyone or else what will happen Allah Azza wa Jal will punish these people in other words in surah al qasas verse number 57 Allah Azza wa Jal he says and then say if we followed the guidance with you we would be snatched away from our land have we not established for them a secure sanctuary yani makka to which are brought fruits of all kinds you know the people of makka they were scared and why were they scared because if they accepted islam then what will happen is they lose everything they lose their their status their wealth because they accepted islam that was the fear that the shaitan put inside their hearts halaki that was not the case hazrat sayyiduna abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he accepted islam allah ta'ala gave him such a high rank that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave him the title of as siddiq and then my dear islam brothers when hazrat umar bin khattab radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu accepted islam allah azza wa jalla beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave him such a high rank in islam that the hadith pak the mafhum is that if there was another prophet after me that would have been umar but there is no prophet after me that is the status you know hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu a staunch enemy of islam but yet when he accepted islam look at the status that islam gave him look at the status that the prophet sallallahu Allah wa alihi wa sallam gave to him Hazrat Sayyiduna Usman Ghani radiyallahu ta'ala anhu accepted Islam one of the early Muslims to accept Islam what did he benefit from accepting Islam yes he benefited that he became Usman Ghani and what can you say about Mawla Ali karamallahu ta'ala wajhahul karim accepted islam the first child to accept islam at the age of 9 or 10 years old or 11 years old my dear islam brothers and viewers of madani channel these kufar e quraish they thought that if they accepted islam they will lose their wealth they will lose their status but never did they realize that they will not lose their status but they will get such a status not only in this dunya but in the hereafter as well such a beautiful status that in the quran Allah Azza wa Jal he says that Allah Ta'ala is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah Azza wa Jal. Hazrat Sayyiduna Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma he reports that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to Makkah there is no finer place than you no place more beloved to me and were it not for the fact that your people expelled me from you i would not have lived elsewhere that is the love our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had for makkah al mukarrama in another uh, hadith of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam the mafhum is by allah he said to the makkah by allah you are the best of the lands of allah and the most beloved to allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam why should we not love makkah why should we not cherish and why should we not talk about makkah in our lives why should we not you know smile and bring a smile to our faces it brings you the coolness of the eyes that is the beautiful city of makkah now my dear islam brothers makkah al mukarrama other very famous landmarks in makkah al mukarrama you have the the, the graveyard of jannatul ma'ala the second most holiest graveyard in the world that is in jannatul ma'ala and that is where the beloved grandfather of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is buried hazrat sayyiduna abdul muttalib radiyallahu ta'ala anhu you can imagine how beautiful how sacred this graveyard will be and then also the first woman in islam hazrat sayyiduna khadijatul kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha her mazar e pak is also in jannatul ma'ala and many many awliya e kiram and sahaba e kiram are buried in this blessed graveyard of makkah al mukarrama our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to visit this graveyard and one of the greatest companions you can say was hazrat sayyida khadija radhiyallahu ta'ala anha and sayyida aisha siddiqa radhiyallahu ta'ala anha she says that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said oh aisha what khadija did for me and for islam none of you can ever do that subhanallah this most sacred and beloved of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is also buried in jannatul ma'ala masjid e jin is also in makkah al mukarrama masjid e jin is that place where the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wa alihi wasallam he would go with the companions and he would give da'wat to the to the jins 
He would invite the jinns toward Islam. He would teach them the Quran. And today, in that place, we have Masjid al-Jinn. In Makkatul Mukarrama, we have Jabal Nur, the mountain of light. On this mountain, Allah Azza wa Jal sent the revelation to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the same mountain that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to go and meditate. He used to spend nights and days and weeks in this mountain, alone, secluded, and in the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Alhamdulillah, I've had the opportunity. Many of you who will be watching have had this opportunity to go and offer your salah, offer your nawafil in this blessed mountain as well. Also, we have the blessed mountain of Jabal Thor, that mountain which housed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi uh, Wasallam. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was migrating from Makkah to Medina, he stayed in this cave on this mountain for three days and three nights. Subhanallah. Can you imagine how blessed moment that would be that this Jabal Thor had the opportunity to house the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a very long story, but just to cut it short, Allah, when the Prophet Sallallahu was right at the top and there was a small cave, it says that when a person stands up, you only need to look down and you can see what's inside the cave. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were in that cave. And then when the Kuffar, the non-Muslims, they came on top, Allah Azza wa Jal ordered uh, a pigeon to lay egg and he ordered a spider to build a web around it. So the people, they thought that they're not inside. Allah Ta'ala saved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was Jabal Thor that had this opportunity. And then you also have the blessed city of the tents, Mina and Masjid Khaif that are also part of Makkatul Mukarrama, the Haram. Subhanallah, my dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madani channel, may Allah Ta'ala give us all the ability to visit this blessed city of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then when you go to Makkah, think of it, that you are so blessed that out of so many millions of people, Allah Ta'ala has chosen you to come and be blessed with this city of Makkah. May Allah Ta'ala take everyone there again and again. Take care of yourself. Don't forget to watch the next episodes, inshaAllah Azza wa Jal. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. This Eid al-Adha, this Eid al-Adha, this Eid al-Adha, this Eid al-Adha. May Allah's blessings bring happiness, peace and prosperity.